Hello and welcome to Sequel Bits. My name is Terry McCann and I will be your ringmaster for this session. This is a short session, this is a 15 minute session and what we're going to be looking at is how you go about capturing requirements for machine learning. Okay, let's take a little look at some slides. Right, let me just grab my clicker slash baton. Right, let's have a look. Okay, so a little bit about me. My name is Terry McCann. I run a consultancy in the UK called Advancing Analytics. We do all sorts, data science, data ops, data engineering, applied AI. We have a whole load of training as well. Come and have a look at us. We are a sponsor um, as well as an exhibitor today. So come and chat to us. Okay. Also, check us out on YouTube. We do loads of stuff like this. We're always talking on YouTube and we'd love to continue the conversation. Okay, a little bit about me. I'm an AI MVP, so an artificial intelligence MVP, which basically means I just spend a load of time talking at events like this and probably not enough time doing real work. But, okay, let's carry on. So, picking your first machine learning problem is hard, right? How do you go about understanding what you should be doing? What should you be choosing? What type of problem should you be looking at? It's very easy to run straight ahead, right? Dive straight in and think, right, let's try and tackle a computer vision problem. Yeah, that's certainly going to be interesting. It potentially is going to be high value. But it's also quite risky. And you want to be understanding and thinking about, okay, well, if this is new, how do I bed this into my organization? How do I show my organization that... Machine learning is the right thing for us, and this is actually the right place that we should be investing time and crucially money into. So when we work with customers, and we've worked with a lot of customers building out machine learning models for a whole variety of different problems, we have over time, through our own research and through leveraging the research of others, extended an idea which has been around since the kind of Six Sigma days of building out the concept of a canvas and then using that to capture requirements. So we have, and I'd like to introduce you to today, the machine learning canvas for rapidly capturing requirements about any machine learning problem. And everybody, it looks a little bit like this. So hopefully in the notes of this session, there'll be a link for you to go and download this. If there isn't, then have a look at our sponsor page and there will be a link that you can download it there. Now we have got loads of these printed. If you would like a couple of them, then just send me your details and I'll pop a load in the post for you and you can just doodle away on them to your heart's content, all right? This is what it looks like, all right? And what I wanna do is I wanna take you through how to actually use it, okay? So there are a whole load of things about what we're doing and why we are doing it. But I think it's best to actually step through an example, okay? So we're going to do that. Let's switch over to my whiteboard. And let's step through an example together. Okay, so what I've done is I have taken our machine learning canvas, which is this, and I have put that in to a Microsoft whiteboard. So we can just draw whatever we want here, right? Nice, big, smiley face. But what I want to do is take you through fundamentally what we are looking at. So our canvas is designed, one, to help you understand what it is that you need to do in order to build our model. But it's also really geared up around trying to hammer home the importance of why are we doing what we are doing? And fundamentally, when should we stop doing it? Because in machine learning, it's really easy to get to that initial quite high level of accuracy. It could take you a couple of hours to get to that kind of high 80s. And then it could take you a month to go from 88% to 90%. And it comes down to, you know, do you actually need to spend all that time? Or is that 88% model good enough for what we need? And should we actually spend the rest of the time actually getting that into production? Okay. So we start off with our decision outcomes. What are we trying to predict? How would it actually be used? Why are we doing this? And really fundamentally, like, what is the value? Who is going to benefit? 
So what we are looking to do, okay, is we are a retail store, we're an online retailer, and what we're looking to do is we are going to try to make a final recommendation to somebody to buy a product which maybe they have forgotten about, okay? So let's say what we're looking to do is, why are we doing this? We are looking to um, increase ROI through recommendations, right? Okay, so we're going to increase our ROI through a recommendation. So more ROI is equal to more profit, right? Okay, so a higher ROI, a higher profit. So what do we know about our decision inputs? What are our likely features? What do we know about the decision already? And how would somebody make this currently? So we know that we have... Basically, we've got a team who are doing um, data analytics. And they have come up with what is essentially a knowledge-based system, which says, if you have bought product A, then you might want to buy product B, okay? So here we say, you've started with product A, and you recommend you product B here, or maybe product C, okay? But we know that this process it's really long-winded, takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of domain knowledge, and it isn't very sustainable. And certainly as the company grows and the amount of products we have, you know, increase, our amount of ability and time that we have to actually do this is going to decrease, and that's not going to work out very well for us. So somebody can do this now. They can do it using data analytics by looking at what has been sold previously, and then also the habits of... Um, a, a shopper, so their habits, their preferences, and then also the common products. Which products actually sell really well together? When somebody buys a remote control car, do they actually need to buy the batteries with it as well? You know, what are the common things purchased at the same time? Maybe we should start recommending those. Now we get down to success criteria. What is it we're actually trying to do? Where is our prediction? What is ROI defined as? How much time are we expecting to save? You know, what is our success criteria? How much investment is required and when should we stop? So we should stop when we can meet um, what the existing team are doing. And this is also validated, right? Okay. Or we run out of budget. Okay. Or we run out of money. Right? One of them is going to happen first. Either we're going to hit there or we're going to run out of money. Okay. Then we start ed edging in to our main piece. Okay. So we now know when we're going to stop. We're going to know what we're going to do. This is our model propositions. This is how are we going to apply data science to our problem? What is it we're going to do? What is our kind of intended structure? What are we going to make? So here we say, right, we're making a recommender. We're making a recommendation. We're thinking that we're potentially going to have to do a combination of collaborative filtering and maybe content-based filtering, All right? What that basically means is that we're looking at how well products sell against each other and how well items and products, so um, products and products and users and products, okay? And we do that using a collaborative filtering process. And then we look at content, which is what do they buy? Who are they? What is their demographics? You know, are they a young buyer? Are they an affluent buyer? Do they spend quite frequently? What are their purchasing habits? What do we know that they may want to purchase, okay? We try and combine both of these approaches to produce a recommendation that's going to work really well for us. And we might say that, okay, well, we're going to use um, Apache Spark because we know that we have got a lot of sales and there's a lot of line items and we really want to work with this in the best way possible. And then we start thinking about, well, what's our kind of tiered approach? What are we going to try first? 
So we're going to try ALS first, alternating least squares. That is a very standard approach to doing a collaborative filtering model. And we're going to work with that first to try and see, OK, well, what should we recommend to somebody? Then maybe we're going to go a little bit beyond that. Maybe we'll look at something like surprise, which is a um, extension of scikit-learn for recommendations. And then where we need to, we'll start looking at things like deep matrix factorization. Or maybe even something like fast AI. Okay. All these different approaches. And with each of these, as we try them, more complexity comes along. And it may be that we want to take on that complexity, or it may be that actually we try ALS and we're really happy and we'll just stop there. Right. And then further as we go down here, we'll then start saying, well, okay, we're going to use Databricks. And we're going to use MLflow. And we're going to use Spark 3. Because that's what the team are comfortable in. That's what everybody knows. That's what they're used to working with. That's where we know they're going to get success. Okay. And we're going to use our ALS. Um, and we're going to use some feature engineering, which we're going to describe down here. So what are the common feature transformations? What can we do to accelerate somebody trying to look at this problem? How nuanced is the data? It's a lot of logic baked into it. How much transformation do we have? And then we can start saying, right, well, we know that there's a gap in our data. So there's a data gap from 0107 to 0307, where we had a massive data loss during that period. So don't train with any data during that period because it isn't representing anymore, but it was a while ago. We also know that our data is um, from multiple time zones. Okay, and we start building up a picture of more and more feature transformations that really need to go into this. Okay, we then move up. What are our input sources? Okay, we're mainly looking to source data from the DW, um, our data warehouse, and then also open public data. Okay, um, and then this is where that data is available. So we're going to get that data. That data is available at um, OpenGov. Okay, that's where we're going to get our data. But then also that DW is on, um, that is on sales DW01 um, dot, you know, um, Azure, right? It's in Azure, it's a platform as a service DB, okay? And then moving that little bit further down, we then get into some things that we may not think about initially, but we do need to think about in order to manage a model in production. Our model's life cycle, how likely is it to decay? Well, new products equals cold start. Okay, so where we have never seen a product before, how do we recommend it? All right, so when do we need to retrain? And let's say, well, what we're going to do is we're going to retrain at the moment, sort of like every every two weeks. Okay, and we'll retrain every two weeks. And we'll see how that goes and we'll evaluate. If we need to increase it, we'll increase it. If not, we'll just keep it as is, right? Great stuff. And the last two. Is this project actually feasible? You know, if we invest the money, will we get the ROI? That's the question that we really need to ask, yeah? Are we going to achieve fundamentally that ROI that we want? Then, what are the other factors? What other risks are there? Well, let's say ML... Um, is new. Our organization, we've never looked at ML before. There's a lot of risk here. We need to work this out. And our final call to action is that we need to um, explore ALS, see how suitable it is, and then we need to prep a session for the senior leadership team about ML and how we're going to implement it. OK, and now with this picture, now, in reality, it probably takes a good day 
with a room full of people and a whiteboard to actually go through this and work it out completely okay there's a lot that kind of goes into this and really this the text here ends up being teeny teeny weeny tiny and you have a whole load of different options that you can really throw around but once you do have this and I'm going to switch back to the slides once you do have this what you are then able to do is start building out fundamentally a funnel of how suitable each product is each model is and when you want to use it okay whether there's a large amount of complexity from machine learning or a large amount of complexity from a data science perspective you can see that and you can prioritize and you can pick those products and those machine learning problems that you know are going to be the best to tackle straight away so that is the ml canvas and thank you very much for coming to the session do check us out as i say we are a sponsor so come and download this have a look and get started if you want help going through the first problem let us know we have a session that we can run through with you get you up to speed and help your teams get accelerated with machine learning and then fundamentally take your models and get them running in production okay thank you so much i really hope you have a great sequel bits and i'll see you again okay thanks very much